I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be taking some of your favorite weapons to mash up into hybrids you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms Reforged. Out of all the weapons that we're working on this season, this one is the most special to me, and I can't wait to get started on it. For this build, we use 1075 steel from the New Jersey Steel Baron. Using a Japanese-style forging hammer he made himself, Sam forges the tip on the katana. Using the custom sword furnace, Sam heats the blade and draws it out on the power hammer. Sam forges the bevels on the blade. After rough grinding, Sam draw files the spine to shape. Now that Matt did the pre-grind to the katana, we're going to do uh, the finer details of the file using a technique called draw filing. The tang in our left hand and the tip of the file in the right. Hold it lateral to the length of the blade with just nice even pressure. This will remove the high spots and the low spots, make everything nice and even. And if your file gets still, you can always use your lightsaber. Using refractory cement, Sam clay coats the blade to create the hamon. So now we're going to mix up the clay, our refractory cement, and paint it along the spine of the blade. It'll act as an insulator to give us the traditional Japanese hamon, which is also called a hardening line. It yields a hard edge with a soft and ductile spine, and also the hamon is very beautiful. It looks like puffy clouds or crashing waves, cherry blossoms. This is something that was only recently discovered and began to be practiced here in America because it's pretty next level stuff. We leave the clay overnight to dry and then we're ready for heat treating. We then begin the slow process of heating the blade up to the right temperature, moving it in and out of the hot spot underneath the burner. After the blade has reached the right temperature, we then quench in the horizontal quench tank. We use a horizontal quench tank to mimic the effects of the traditional Japanese swordsmiths. Pulling the blade out of the quench at the right time gives you the ability to correct any warping. Here, using a technique I learned from John Lundemo of Odin Blades, I immerse the blade in a hot oil bath for tempering. To test the heat treat of the katana, I smite a metal barrel. After tempering, I sand the katana blade. I polish it out using progressive grits starting from 50 and ending around 600. Doing a proper traditional Japanese polish takes a very long time. Here I demonstrate just a little bit on the spine using a Japanese whetstone. One of the most difficult decisions for us in this build is to decide if we're going to go Jedi or Sith with the lightsaber. Um, for those who know us, it's a pretty logical decision to go with the Sith. <laughs> for the sword guard or the Tsuba, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Galactic Empire symbol. I think that's a really good tie-in. It's going to allow us to uh, have the lightsaber handle come out of the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw each little part once and then I'm going to array it around so that you get perfect symmetry. For us, symmetry is a big deal. Uh, I believe your eye naturally catches things that are out of symmetry, and we like to make things as perfect as possible. Before cutting, John checks the toolpath on the Galactic Empire Suba. Satisfied with the drawing, John cuts the Suba. Um, 
Using a hundred year old Marvel tilt saw, we cut down the parts to make the lightsaber handle. Using the slack of the sanders, we prep the lightsaber handle for milling. Using the two inch contact wheel, I grind the lightsaber handle overlay to shape. On the South Bend lathe, I relieve and knurl the handle for the lightsaber. I profile the pommel on the South Bend lathe. After profiling the shape, I go to the four axis mill and index and cut the flange. After Carrie mills the pommel for the lightsaber, we do a quick mock-up to see how things fit. Here we have our rough parts for the lightsaber katana. We have our handle core, handle overlay, pommel piece, suba, and what will end up being our hibaki slash end piece. Just marking in a quick grind line. Time to grind. John welds together the Galactic Empire Suba and the Habaki. John TIG welds some half 13 thread on the core of the lightsaber handle. Using black silk, John does a traditional suka wrap on the lightsaber handle. I assemble all the pieces of the sword to check the fit. We use the miniature belt sander to sand the internal weld on the pipe so the pieces will fit correctly. Checking the final assembly for all the parts. This is the, uh, the suba, that's the cross guard for the katana. I'll have to shorten this screw down and make it a little less obtrusive. Now we'll fit the blade. And this will draw the blade down and make it tight. Designing and building your own lightsaber has always been a rite of passage for every Jedi. This piece is a perfect blend of ancient and futuristic weaponry. An elegant weapon for a more civilized age. I hope you like it as much as we do, and may the Force be with you, always. to know what you want to see the guys build so tell us in the comments below what hybrid weapon you want to see created next and to make sure you don't miss it please hit that subscribe button